Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Aggregate supply is defined as the total quantity of all goods and services in real GDP that domestic firms are willing and able to produce at various price levels. Unlike supply in microeconomics, which analyzes the supply produced by individual firms and individual markets, aggregate supply in macroeconomics includes all firms and all types of goods included in real GDP output across the entire economy, from cars to houses to cereal to healthcare. Aggregate supply includes the total quantity of all domestic output produced within an aggregate economy at every price level. Like few other economic concepts, aggregate supply is unique in that it is analyzed through two scopes, the short run and the long run. In this video, we'll focus on short run aggregate supply. This is the short run aggregate supply curve. Notice that it is an upward sloping curve, implying that the relationship between aggregate price level and aggregate real GDP output supplied is positive. This means that as prices rise due to inflation in the aggregate economy, firms across the economy are more willing or more able to produce the same quantity of real GDP output and therefore supply more. As prices fall due to deflation in the aggregate economy, firms across the economy are less willing and less able to produce the same quantity of real GDP output and therefore supply less. Short run and long run analysis has nothing to do with time. Instead, it refers to available resources, the land, labor, and capital used for the purpose of production. In the short run, the quantity of at least one of these resources is fixed, meaning it isn't possible for firms to gain additional quantities of that resource when producing real GDP output. For example, suppose in the short run CNH wants to increase production of sugar. However, the quantity of land and capital available to CNH are currently fixed and cannot change. This means that CNH would be limited as to how much sugar it could produce in the short run. In macroeconomics, the law of fixed resources in short run analysis is true for all firms across the entire economy. For this reason, short run aggregate supply curve assumes that wages, the cost of acquiring resources, are fixed. This means that in the short run, Domestic firms will see revenues increase with inflation and decrease with deflation, while costs remain exactly the same. For example, if prices increase by 50% in the United States economy between 2015 and 2060, revenues will increase by 50%, even if the same quantity of goods and services are produced and sold. But in the short run, wages are fixed and remain the same, meaning costs will not change between 2015 and 2060. This means that in the short run, domestic firms have a profit motive to supply a greater quantity of real GDP output as prices increase and a lesser quantity of real GDP output when prices decrease. And so, in macroeconomics, the profit motive causes the short run aggregate supply curve to be upward sloping. When prices rise due to inflation, firms see an incentive to earn greater profits because, in the short run, wages are fixed and revenues are rising. And so firms are more willing and able to supply the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output at higher prices. As a result, an increase in price level across the aggregate economy causes an increase in aggregate real GDP output supplied and a movement along the short run aggregate supply curve from point A to point B. When prices fall due to deflation, firms see a smaller likelihood to earn large profits because in the short run, wages are fixed and revenues are falling. And so firms are less willing and able to supply the same quantity of aggregate real GDP output at lower prices. As a result, a decrease in price level across the aggregate economy causes a decrease in aggregate real GDP output supplied and a movement along the short run aggregate supply curve from point B to point A. For instance, in our previous example using the United States economy, we concluded that as wages remain fixed in the short run, Profits increased by 50% for firms across the economy when inflation increased by 50%. As long as wages remain fixed, firms have an incentive to supply greater quantities of real GDP output as prices continue to increase. As they do, profits will continue to increase as output supply increases in the short run. Fundamental changes in economic conditions 
can cause domestic firms to supply a lesser or a greater quantity of aggregate real GDP output at every price level. This is called a change in aggregate supply, and it is visualized by a shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve. There are three determinants of aggregate supply, resource prices and availability, actions of government, like corporate taxes, subsidies, and regulation, and productivity and technology. There's a really easy way to remember these determinants. Together, these three determinants form the acronym RAP. A change in any of these three determinants will cause a fundamental change in aggregate supply, which will lead to changes in the aggregate economy. A rightward shift of the aggregate supply curve indicates that short-run aggregate supply has increased in the economy, and a greater quantity of real GDP output is being produced, no matter the price level in the aggregate economy. Inflation or deflation doesn't matter. Domestic firms are producing more real GDP. A leftward shift of the short-run aggregate supply curve indicates that short-run aggregate supply has decreased in the economy, and a lesser quantity of real GDP output is being produced, no matter the price level in the aggregate economy. Inflation or deflation? Doesn't matter. Domestic firms are producing less real GDP. Let's take a closer look at short-run aggregate supply. Resource prices and availability can be affected by a wide array of factors, including trade policy, natural disasters, and other world affairs. A change in any of these factors can be a catalyst that causes an increase or decrease in input costs and availability, which fundamentally changes aggregate supply and therefore the economy as a whole. For example, suppose the price of steel increases in Germany. Steel is a vital resource for the production of goods and services in the German economy. And as it becomes more expensive, production costs increase and firms will produce lesser quantities of real GDP output at every price level. This increase in resource prices will cause a decrease in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. Now suppose that the Australian government authorizes an increase in offshore oil drilling. As new Australian rigs begin to extract crude oil from the ocean floor, Australian oil reserves will increase, making greater quantities of crude oil available to Australian firms for the purpose of production. This increase in resource availability will cause an increase in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. Actions of government constitute corporate taxation, subsidies, and regulation on domestic firms. A change in any of these policies can cause an increase or a decrease in supply-side government intervention, which fundamentally changes aggregate supply and the entire economy. For example, suppose that the French government increases corporate profit taxes on domestic firms. In order to avoid paying the higher tax rates, firms will avoid higher profits and scale back their production. This increase in corporate profit taxes will cause a decrease in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. Now suppose that the Argentinian government increases subsidies to all firms in domestic fishing industries. Argentinian fishing firms will receive more grant money from the government, which they will use to buy more boats and equipment, hire more workers, and pay for production costs. This will allow these firms to increase their production levels. This increase in corporate subsidies will cause an increase in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. Now suppose that the United States Congress signs a bill that deregulates the domestic coal industry. Reducing regulation on domestic coal firms will allow those firms to scale production, hire more workers, and produce greater quantities of coal without limits. This decrease in federal regulation will cause an increase in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. Productivity refers to the quantity of output produced per unit of input. When each unit of land, labor, or capital can produce more output, they have become more productive. When productivity increases or decreases, it fundamentally changes aggregate supply and therefore the economy as a whole. For example, suppose that Italian engineers develop a new production technique that doubles the productivity of every worker in the Italian workforce. This means that Italian workers can now produce twice as many goods and services as they used to in the same amount of time. This increase in productivity will cause an increase in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy. Now suppose that American computer scientists develop a new automation program that increases the productivity of every American factory by 200%. This means American firms can produce three times as many goods and services as they used to in the same amount of time. This increase in productivity due to technology will cause an increase in short-run aggregate supply across the entire economy.
And that's short run aggregate supply. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick micro and macro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my long run aggregate supply video, and you can click here for my aggregate demand video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on Yuvala of Economics.